Hey, what up squad? It's your boy KFlow. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to install rear airbags on the Tacoma. Now let's get this thing started. Now, if you're new to this channel, this channel makes in-depth DIY Toyota Tacoma tutorials for the second gen Toyota Tacoma. So smash that like and subscribe button, baby. Do it now, guys. Now, all the tools and the materials that I use in this video will be on my Amazon page. So check that out at amazon.kflow-crib.com. So for those of you guys who have been following this channel for a while, I know I said in a previous video that I don't want airbags, but that was mainly because I didn't want another system on the truck that can be another point of failure. And I really thought that I was going to be driving with the camper 90% of the time. But due to new circumstances in my life, guys, I actually had to use my truck more as a work truck this past year than a camping truck. So that ratio became 50% of the time that I had to drive without the camper. Now the 50% of the time that I was riding without the camper, the ride quality was super stiff, guys. Just to recap, the leaf springs that I have on the rear, they're actually the Dobinson's extra heavy duty leaf springs, which are rated for 880 pounds to 1210 pounds of constant force, which is pretty much the overall weight of the camper. And without the camper, that ride quality sucked pretty bad. It was like super stiff and you definitely felt each and every bump as you're riding. And it made it even worse when you're riding on off-road terrain. So unfortunately, I did have to learn this stuff the hard way. Now I definitely had to solve this problem, guys, because I know I wanted good ride quality with and without the camper. I also still wanted to allow articulation in that rear suspension and then on top of that, depending on what I'm hauling from tools to furniture to other random things from lumber to, to stone and gravel, I still wanted some type of adjustability in the load capacity for the back of the truck. So after several hours of research and planning, the solution that I came up with was basically to use the Firestone airbag system along with the Daystar cradle and additionally, I did have to reduce the leaf pack that I had from the extra heavy duty configuration to the light duty configuration, which is pretty much rated for zero to 200 pounds of constant weight. And with the airbags themselves, they're actually rated to about 3,500 pounds to 5,000 pounds of load per set. Now here's some footage guys from about three weeks ago from my last trip to Vermont. Oh, baby! Oh, oh, baby. Three wheel in! Three in. Wheels in the air! Someone take a video. <laughs> Alright, go ahead, take a picture on my camera. Wait, did you just stop doing chips? <laughs> no. That's a real Toyota. That's a real Toyota. Oh. 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 Now, as you can see, guys, even with the airbag system, I was still able to achieve that off-road flex and still made my ride quality so much better on road and off road. So this was definitely the perfect solution for at least what I'm doing guys. And if you wanted to skip the point of the video where I go into reducing the leaf spring pack, you can just skip ahead to this time code you see here. But if not, keep watching this video and let's get to the garage. Alrighty guys, so here's a quick description of the setup. Currently she's up on jack stands with the wheels and tires removed. Now I did jack her up as high as possible on these tall jack stands. And then I let this rear axle pretty much droop down as far as possible. So I have this as far down as possible without overstretching these brake lines. As you notice, I did already install the driver's side airbag. And I did that so I can at least put together a lessons learned for you guys. So I still got to do the opposite side. But yeah, the driver's side's already installed. I have this rear axle drooping as far down as possible because we definitely want as much room between the top of the leaf spring and the bottom of the frame when we do this work. So that's what the airbag's gonna look like from the top, guys. 
and I do have the cradle so it allows for more separation of the axle when we're at flex I have not installed the airlines yet but I'll do that all at the end here's a little bit more on how it looks once it's completely installed this is the Daystar cradle and all this all these materials will be on my Amazon page so definitely make sure you check that out at amazon.kflow-crypt.com and also I just want to point out that I did remove two of the leaf springs here because Dobbinson's the way they have their leaf spring set up is they actually have a light version a medium version and a heavy duty version so the light version they only have five springs five leaf springs on the leaf spring system so as you can see there's one two three four five and this allows you to carry zero to two hundred pounds of constant weight on the back of the truck and this is the least undersprung configuration that they have and this is the third configuration that they have which is pretty much the heaviest duty which has seven leaf springs so let's count that one two three four five six seven and the difference between the light and the heavy duty is that there is no leaf spring on number three here and there's no leaf spring on number five so i'll be removing those two to make it a light duty configuration and as you can see i've also removed the u-bolts on the leaf spring to the axle and I've also removed the shock, which is right there, and I have it resting on the slider for now. Now, I'm not going to be going over the full details of how to remove and replace sections of the leaf spring, nor the shocks, because I've already made a full blown tutorial on that, guys. So definitely make sure you check that out on this channel. I'll also have it linked in the description below. I also just want to point out, guys, that in the instructions, they do tell you to cut the top of the bump stop and I didn't want to do that. That's going to look horrendous. So uh, this is the bump stop here. I would advise you guys just remove it. It's really not that bad to remove. So the bump stop sits on top of the leaf spring like that. And the U-bolt goes over the top just like that. Obviously on both the front and back side. Just like that and then it's secured from the bottom of the axle right underneath for all for those points of the u-bolt and those u-bolts are then secured to this bracket with a washer and a lock nut now if you guys want to do this and have a really clean install I would highly advise you just remove this bracket remove this u-bolt and then just undo it like that and then just reinstall the u-bolt back with the bracket definitely check out that video on this channel guys because i do go into the full details of torque specs steps and all the minute details in order to remove and install the leaf springs as well as how to install an add leaf and in this case I'm going to be doing the reverse of an ad leaf so that this rear spring and damper system is no longer oversprung. Alrighty guys, now we've reduced leaf packs. So we're down to one, two, three, four, five leaf springs. And now we can get the actual work started. And just to recap guys, the truck is jacked up as high as possible on the frame. And this axle is drooped down as low as possible so that we don't over tension those lines. So that's the ABS cable and the brake lines. So that's the ABS cable you see here and the brake lines that you see here on the left. We also have this bump stop removed and we've also removed the shock. So now we have a lot of space to work here guys. So now we're going to start with the easy part which is to put in the lower cradle for the airbags. So let's get to that now. So now this lower cradle, you'll actually have to buy a separate kit and it will come with its own hardware. So this lower cradle will install on this lower bracket for the airbag system. This is the bracket that we're going to be using. It has a little notch on the bottom and this is the proper orientation. So now let's take our 916 socket and wrench and install this cradle onto this bracket. I do like to use a little bit of anti-seize on the hardware so that it doesn't 
seize up in the future. Just like that guys. So now that we have this lower assembly complete, we'll have to install this on to the top portion of the leaf springs. And we're gonna accomplish that by using these two long brackets, these four carriage bolts, and these four flange nuts. So just to note guys, these are locking flange nuts. So all we're gonna do is flush them up against the leaf springs. And there's really no specific torque for this. So just to point out guys, this bracket does have a slot and a hole on the one side. I kept the hole more on the outside of the truck and kept it consistent on both sides. So that's what it should look like so far guys. This is still currently loose, as you see. So before we button everything up guys, we gotta make sure that the center line of this cradle is pretty much on the same center line of this leaf spring here so that when this compresses, it catches on the proper orientation of the airbags that will be mounted up here. Now let's give her a quick jiggle. It's definitely not going anywhere, but we're definitely going to double check once the tires are on the ground. So it's definitely best to do that because you don't want this flopping around as soon as there's a weight on the system. All right guys, so now let's install this upper rear bracket. And this will be installed by basically the biggest hardware that we have. So that's the biggest nuts, bolts, washer, and lock washer. So we're here on the underside of the truck and we basically have to install that whole thing right behind that hole. So I'll show you how to do that now. So there's a bolt and washer on the opposite side, guys. So this will basically snug down as far as we can by hand for now. Now let's assemble the airbag assembly. So this will require this heat shield, the airbag itself, this L bracket, we also need this fitting here. This is for the hose fitting that goes on in the internal threads of the airbag. And we also need this nylock nut. Now just to point out guys, I did not put the heat shield on the driver's side because the heat shield actually protrudes out and it might cause chafing on the brake lines. Yeah, as you can see guys, the brake lines get really close to the airbags and I really don't want that to interfere with that heat shield. And there's really no heat in this area. We only have to worry about the heat of this exhaust pipe here. Now let's get this thing assembled. So this bracket has only one orientation that it could go to when it comes to assembling it with the air spring. So it can only go one way, just like that. There's a little notch here that prevents it from rotating. So if you try to go the other way, it's not gonna go the two holes are different sizes. Now when it comes to assembly, we'll have to make sure we put this heat shield on. So the heat shield goes on top, just like that. And this outer bracket goes on top of the heat shield, just like that. Then we can install this nylock nut here, right over this fitting of the air spring. And now let's snug it down until this bracket is fully secure on the air spring. And now I advise to put this whole thing on a bench vise in order to put the fitting right through there without any problem. I did put a little bit of anti-seize to ease the assembly process. So looks like there's a little bit of access and I'm gonna wipe that off. Now we could install that air fitting that goes over here. So now let's install the quick connect fitting and we'll have to orient it so that the 90 degree is pointed towards the heat shield. 
this already has Loctite, so we can do a, a quick leak check before we install everything onto the truck. And I'm using a 13 millimeter wrench in order to tighten this down. So this is brass and you definitely don't want to over tighten this fitting. And we'll keep this on the bench vise for now. So now let's test the system guys. What I have here, this is the air inlet fitting. This has a Schrader valve at the end and I'll show you that when I assemble it onto the air spring. And this is a piece of scrap tubing which has the same diameter as the Firestone tubing that the set came with. So I'm going to be using the scrap tubing. But you can definitely just snip off like maybe four inches from the end of this in order to perform your test. So we're going to take this Schrader valve and this tubing and assemble it onto the air spring in order to pressure test the thing. So the tubing goes into this fitting like so. You push it all the way in. And then the Schrader valve goes in the opposite end. Push that all the way in. And that's it. Now we can take this cover, pretty much expose the Schrader valve there and we can pressurize the system. Now I'm going to inflate it to about 25 PSI, as you see right here. So that's roughly at about 30 PSI actually. I'm going to take it off the air compressor. And let's basically cover it with Windex. And if we see any bubbles, that means we got a leak. She's now doused with Windex, guys, and looks like we're not getting any bubbles at the fittings, which is a good sign. So she's holding pressure. Even underneath, it looks okay. And we're not getting any bubbles up here or down here, because I saw in the pictures that there were some cases of some of these airbags leaking, like in these areas here. So if this was to leak, it would probably be more and these like areas here but she's holding pressure there so that's awesome and now let's depressurize the system and install her on the truck now I'm just gonna use the air gun to pretty much get rid of all the Windex around it I'm going to put this cap back on so we don't lose it but in order to remove this fitting all we have to do is use I'm using an 8 millimeter wrench just to push on this collar and we should be able to pull it out just like that guys so on the opposite side, this might be a little bit harder to grip, but we can take our channel locks and just grab it at the middle and then just push it like this. It'll come right off. Now we'll install this bracket onto this bracket using these four hardware. These are all half inch hex head sizes. So this actually clamps onto the back just like that, and it grabs part of the frame. And I'll show you that now. So those front bolts for that clamp is only finger tightened for now. And I'm going to be basically putting the last four nuts and bolts to make this assembly complete. And I'll also keep this finger tightened as well. All right guys, so first I'm gonna tighten down this front bracket using a half inch wrench and socket. Now these I will tighten up with a 9 16 inch socket and wrench. And that's pretty much how I tightened it from the back guys. It's good to definitely have an air ratchet and I don't have a 22 millimeter wrench, so I just use the adjustable on the front. But if you are doing this job and you don't have an air ratchet, it'll be a little bit more difficult. Now let's mount this Schrader valve, guys. The way it's mounted is we basically put one washer on the one side that mounted onto a wall, or in our case, there's actually a little bracket that they give you. And then the washer goes in front of that bracket, then it's snug down with this nut. And then obviously it'll close it up. I'll demonstrate that on the bracket that they provide. So there's the bracket, guys. And it comes with these two long zip ties. And I believe they said in their instructions that you mount this onto the frame. 
so that you have at least hard points for these Schrader valves. So as I was saying, this goes in the back. This washer goes in the front. And then this nut goes into the front of everything. So installation will be like that. But I'm not gonna do that. And I'll talk about why I'm picking the spots that I choose onto the, on the frame of the truck. So on the frame of the truck guys, there's already an existing hole right there. Same thing on the opposite side. And there's the one on the passenger side, guys. I'm going to be using these two holes instead. I'd like to be able to measure and inflate per side with my tape measure. And on top of that, I, it allows me to squeeze the bags and deflate it as far as possible so that it stays more off the cradle if I'm not needing to use them. So it increases the upward flex of the suspension system and I think eventually I'm actually going to connect those air lines to my onboard air compressor system using a set of solenoids but that's not going to be until a little bit later. So now this kit did come with a heat shield that goes over the tubing and I'm going to basically just use it for only the driver's side. Alrighty guys so that's what it looks like from the inside. So you can see the heat shield is on there and I try to keep it pretty close to the frame so it's farther away from this exhaust pipe here. But yeah, that looks good guys. And what's good is the airline doesn't have to be super long. So routing it and mounting it onto the frame like that keeps it pretty straight and simple. And here's what it looks like on the driver's side. So now I'm going to basically Pressurize the system again to 25 PSI and leak check the thing to make sure there's no leaks and I'll probably do that off camera because I've already showed you guys how to do that. Alright guys everything looks good. I'm gonna keep it at 20 PSI as you see here. It's pretty much extended and I did use some RP342 to protect the hardware from rusting so I advise you guys to do the same thing link to this RP342 and the studies that I did will be on the description below and you can find this product on my Amazon page so check that out amazon.hayflow-crib.com and as you can probably tell guys I still don't have the shock yet I still do want to do one more check so I'm gonna keep that inflated to 20 psi and I'll jack up the axle and push it up from underneath and just make sure this is to check that when there's weight on the bottom axle those air springs will go right in the center of those cradles so let's get to that now alrighty guys all the way is now on the axle and it looks like it's centered right onto this cradle so this install is good so now I'm going to be dropping it back onto the jack stands and at this point I'm going to also be installing the shocks right back on both the driver and the passenger side and that pretty much finishes up this install so I'll skip ahead and if you want full details on reinstallation of the shocks I've already done that in my leaf spring video so I'll link that in the description below so make sure you check that out so as I said guys I can deflate it using my inflation tool and then if I also want higher upward articulation I can further deflate it by hand and then just basically keep a vacuum on the airbags themselves so that it stays a little bit higher. Alright guys, so there it is. Still plenty of room to reach from the top and plenty of clearances here at the bottom guys. So I think that spot in the frame is definitely a good spot if you have a 3 inch lift. So now I'll demo the airbags themselves. I'll raise up the driver's side so you guys can see how much I can lift it. I'm probably only gonna go to 20 ish PSI because there's no weight in the back. Actually I went all the way up to 40 so let's uh, let's take a look. Definitely higher at the back now. Now I'll drain the air so you guys can see how it levels out. So yeah guys, 
that's it, looks good. The truck's definitely a lot more leveled out now that I have the airbags. Still have the lift in the back, but the back isn't giving too much of a positive brake. So we'll see how this holds up in the next several trips. But I'll keep you guys posted. So after a little bit more research, apparently the bottom of this bracket is supposed to be touching this axle housing here. But as you can see, since I have an aftermarket leaf pack, it's a lot thicker than the leaf pack that's OEM. So there's probably about a half inch gap in between the bottom of this to the axle housing. So what I did was actually 3D print this jack pad that you see here. It's basically a jack pad. This goes on the bottom of the bracket and on top of the axle housing. So it works basically like a jack pad. And this fits perfectly in between those two mating areas. So I'll show you that now. So that's how it looks guys. Now plastic has a very high compressive strength. And this is printed at 90% infill, so it should, this should definitely hold up in terms of taking the compressive load of this bracket. And that's what it looks like from a different angle, guys. And here's a better look at this jack pad, guys. This surface here matches the same contour of the axle housing. And those two notches pretty much match up with the teeth on the bottom of the bracket. So this thing should definitely hold up well. And I'll keep you guys posted as to how this thing pretty much holds up through terrain and having the camper on there. Hey guys, so here are some final thoughts. If you're like me and you have high varying loads in the back of your truck and you still want to achieve pretty much the full articulation of that rear suspension, then really the airbags and the cradle is definitely the way to go. So just to point out guys, with the extra heavy duty leaf springs, the truck sat with about two and a half inches higher clearance on the back without the camper and probably only about an inch and a half higher in the back with the camper. And now reducing that leaf spring, I actually got the, the truck more leveled out. So all the gaps on four corners of the truck is roughly about the same now at about six and a half inches. Now I will always be modding this truck guys. And if the constant load goes up, I could always add one of those leaves back on, which is really not a big deal. Now in order to address if any of those airbags fail during a trip, I'll probably just carry a spare airbag in the truck, just like carrying a spare tire. And also guys, just to make it easier for replacement during a trip or something like that, I'll probably just use a straight fitting into the bag instead of the elbow fitting that it comes with because what happens is if you have to remove it off of the truck you'll actually have to undo that elbow first and then undo the nylock nut but if you have a straight fitting you can just do a hot swap by just undoing that one nylock nut which will make it a whole lot easier during uh, an emergency replacement now just to point out guys i do have an onboard air compressor in my truck so this allows me to deflate and inflate my tires with no problem. And same thing with the bags. So I can definitely adjust the ride height at any point during my drive. Now, these airbags are rated for about 100 PSI worth of air pressure. And currently with the camper, I only needed about 30 PSI to achieve a leveled height with the weight of the camper on the back of my truck. Now one of the questions that might pop up with regards to installing these bags would be whether or not to put a T-fitting in order to inflate both bags at the same time. And my thoughts on that would be a hell no guys. That would make the truck a little bit more dangerous. A little bit more dangerous in the sense that what happens is both bags are not connected at the same time. So if you're taking a higher speed turn or even just a quick turn the outside bag will compress. So let's say I'm making a left turn, this outside bag will compress, which will cause the inside bag to expand, which will also further tip the weight of your truck to the outside of the turn, 
which will cause the truck to possibly even tip over completely. So you definitely don't want that. Now if you are planning on doing this project and you also have aftermarket leaf packs, you can definitely go to my store and purchase a set of these jack pads. You will have to measure the top of your axle housing to the bottom of that lower bracket in order to get the right thickness of the jack pad for your truck. So that's pretty much all I got for this video guys. I know it's pretty damn long, but thanks for sticking through. Make sure you smash that like, subscribe, and hit that bell while you're at it. And until next time, peace.